morning breaks on Mountjoy Square, here in the north inner city of Dublin on the island of Ireland. The world I can see from my window has changed more rapidly this past year than the fast-moving clouds in stop motion across the western sky at dawn on this, the last day of February in the year after 2021. Among all the turmoil and torpor of this tumultuous year, there are still some things that remain the same. The pandemic has recast society's shape and radically reformed our daily way of life. But down on the ground, new songs of love are still being sung and the beat, as well as life itself, still goes on. This is a short film about love in the time of the pandemic. A love that breaks down barriers for breakfast before moving on to boundaries for brunch and a picnic in the park thereafter. A love that crosses thresholds, age gaps, species differences, postal districts and county lines. This is the love that dares not speak, mumble, bark or growl its name. For reasons that will soon become obvious, this is her, this is hard, Cora. My name is Donald Deneen and I'm an unemployed broadcaster and recovering DJ with time on my hands and currently a camera in them too. And it's with this same machine that I'm going to tell you a tale that is equal parts heartwarming and just a little bit heartbreaking which is probably a good point as any to introduce you to the star of this and all our shows. With personality inversely proportional to scale, actual size with batteries for life included, heart warmer, breaker and commander in chief, this is Cora, hard Cora for short. Was it Confucius who said, the dog who is rescued shall end up rescuing the master, no matter how great the task or small the dog? Or did I dream that up too? There are many aspects of modern love that ancient Chinese philosophy could never have foreseen. Yes, Confucius wrote the book, but our Cora did the rewrite. Now, if you're thinking, how come something this small has occupied such an inordinately large space in your life for 12 years, then not only are you thinking what I'm thinking, but thought hasn't made a fool of you the way Cora has of me. Oh, and I don't have any answers to that question. In fact, I don't have any leads. Chains unbroken, leads united, to be continued. As well as a tale of the unlikeliest of loves in the most troubled of times, this film is also a love letter to the scene in which this romance is set. A theatre of dreams without a roof, welcome to Mountjoy Square Park, where despite the shutdown, it's nearly always showtime. Just like the many variations of made-up ball games taking place endlessly therein, the game of life itself is played out here in all its multifaceted and coloured glory. Even on the darkest of Dublin days, you'll find someone here in a dancing mood. The contours of this story are framed by the perimeter of this urban field, which is the epicentre of a collision between the old and new Dublin. Despite daily and sometimes hourly reminders of the pain and neglect on the surrounding streets, there is a fresh energy in the lifeblood of this community that can make it seem, from down here on the grass at ground level in glorious winter Dublin light, like the first morning of a brave new world. A new world braver and less broken than the previous one we live in hope. But back to Cora. Before taking up a career in human conflict resolution here in the city, she enjoyed a carefree puppyhood in Kerry, where she was known to forego the tried and trusted method of learning new tricks early for the sheer fun and cheap thrill of tormenting bigger dogs with their slower bones and older tricks. The pup. Being unable to pick on someone her own size, never let that stop her. Knowing me, picking on you, this is hard, Cora. 
This contrarian streak followed her like a bad smell to the city where she shunned running with the pack for a life of solitary refinement and no little luxury. Trick or treat, both, please. But seriously, not just in times of crisis like this, but at all times, days, nights, and at all the hours and minutes that fly by or drag in between, in fair weather or foul, you're looking at the best friend a man could have. A man like me and a friend like you. This is her. This is hard, Cora. We've been everywhere, man. Up every flight of the stairway to heaven and down all the blind alleys on the road to hell and back. To the top of the holy Brandon mountain a dozen times, check to the power of 952 meters and the number 12. For every year a pilgrimage, taking it all in her tiny little stride. An expert in the game of wherever you lay your hat, that's your home. Cor would often pack her doggy bag and dispense with the services of her footman, me, for months at a time. Her pet passport was always to paw, and qualms about using it, she had none. In the colder winters, of which there's been several, she would follow the central heating and take up residence in my kid's house, so she didn't have to watch me freeze to death, I guess. Out of concern, you understand. All heart. But then the coronavirus struck and as all hell broke loose, my work dried up and I found myself at home with too much time to kill and nothing by way of a deadly weapon to do the deed. On the plus side, Cora moved back in and together we took shelter from the storm. That's when I took to making renegade radio shows from my front room. Podcasts is another slightly dirtier word for them. Make me an island, I'm yours and this is mine. The making of these islands became a daily pursuit, and in so doing, fresh shoots sprung hopefully from the barren turf of the wasteland. While all this was going on, with my head down, busy at work, blinkers on, a new love was blossoming for Cora in the back garden behind the house and under my big nose. What was it I said about a love that dared not speak its name? In March 2020, Cora added a third word to her lexicon of key terms. Alongside chicken and walkies, enter Willie. You go see Willie? You go see Willie? You go see Willie? You go see Willie? Who's Willie? Willie and Breege are next floor neighbours twice removed in the old Georgian house we occupy on the square. They are the top to my bottom flat. Sixty-four steps separate their front door from mine, but divided by four small paws of big determination and a thirst for adventure stroke hunger for scraps, it all adds up to no distance at all. And to the question of whether you'll still need me when I'm 64 steps away, a resounding yes, says Corbin. Starting last March and continuing all the way to this very moment in time and space, Cora took a shine to Willie so strong, she now lives to make that climb as many times a day as possible and as fast as her little paws will carry her in order to feel love's heat and bask in the glow. And if by chance a locked door should put a stop to your gallop at the top of the stair, then in a show of patience never previously seen in her 12 years, Cora will happily settle down in unfamiliar quiet repose and wait till either hell freezes over or Willie comes home. The way young lovers do in their honeymoon period, Cora has already shed several skins and in trying on fabulous new ones has discovered an appreciation for art she never knew existed just like the patience she didn't know she had. Afternoons are now spent in Willie's studio, observing his painting in silent appreciation, occasionally barking approval at his flattering portraits and offering cold shoulders to former friends who dragged themselves up from downstairs like something the cat brought in. Do I know you? And you are again?
Back out on the street and around the square, Willie and Cora appear to take the imperfect world in their stride, striking a harmonious note in the tune of life that is these days frequently off key. The line they trace is all theirs, just like the ample time it takes to get the job done. Whatever it takes, to wherever and whenever. They invent their own maps, at their own pace, in their own time. Whenever the wider world is in disarray is when we need to read the simple signs on our doorstep the most. These are the signs so easily missed in the relentless flux of daily life in the modern world. Willie and Cora out strolling is a sight for sore and tired eyes and a sign that all is not lost. There is no loss, there are no losers in this equation. A jilted footman I may be, but nothing I have lost. For reassurance, I turn again to Elizabeth Bishop. The art of losing isn't hard to master. So many things seem filled with the intent to be lost that their loss is no disaster. Lose something every day. Accept the fluster of lost door keys. The hour badly spent, the art of losing isn't hard to master. Then practice losing farther, losing faster, places and names, and where it was you meant to travel. None of these things will bring disaster. I lost my mother's watch, and look, my last, or next to last, of three loved houses went. The art of losing isn't hard to master. I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster, some realms I owned, two rivers, a continent, I missed them. But it wasn't a disaster. It's easily forgotten that the simple process of putting one foot or paw in front of the other can be the first step away from our troubles. When it's impossible to tell where humanity is going, take the lead and head to the park. The A to Z of the north inner city of Dublin can be the extent of your alphabetical reach. It's not about the destination, after all. No matter what age, colour, species or size of feet, this much is always true. New paths spring eternally from the walk of life, and whether in giant leaps or baby steps, there's always more to come. It's never too late to find a new path to the waterfall. Just get up and go. Onwards, forwards. No turning back. <laughs>